reviewing two episodes in one review. Everybody better strap in. Let's do this. Everybody, what is going on? It's me, Captain Viral. Today's real live action. You already know what it is. Here we are. The moment that we've been waiting for, but at the same time, we didn't want it to come. It's the end of the first part of Bleach. But see, it's more so bittersweet. Because the things that we've seen in these two episodes, extra footage, the way they delivered things, they added in, taken out. I mean, hey, it all worked out, but we're going to get into it. Now, I had my head prepared for this especially a long time ago when they announced no we won't get all the episodes just straight it's gonna be chopped up you know so here we are I mean all good things must come to an end or should we say a pause I mean hell if we wait over 10 years I mean the season 2 is not, it's not gonna be anything so let's get into this so of course this episode starts out with Sheen giving his report for what he encountered in the world of the living and it was pretty cool to see you know the old Goody 13 and you know this modern current animation now you've seen Gein, Aizen, you know Shontui, uh, Mayuri, you know Byakua now and, and the others but I noticed something of course dare I say it the lighting and quality I, 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 I gotta say it <laughs> I mean how can you not notice I mean go back and look at the panel alright and then just look at this you actually see just the, the dust particles, the rays, the light, everything looked good and it looked perfect. But I noticed something, um, I don't know if you all noticed it. Kumamura, of course they didn't show him in the manga during the meeting, but here in the anime, he was present. And not only was he present, this was the current Kumamura in this flashback. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say it again, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put up the screenshot. The current Kumamura in this flashback. This just goes to show, man, that no one's perfect. Not even a team of individuals are perfect. I will never forget, there is a picture that Kubo drew of Grimjaw. He didn't have his jaw. You know, like, you know, the bone jaw. He, he didn't have it. I mean, it was just an honest mistake, whatever. And you see with these team of animators, they, or whoever was in charge, the lead director, whatever. This was the current Kumamura. Now, maybe they have fixed it on the Blu-ray. Who knows? I'm going to really keep an eye out for that, though, when I get the Blu-ray. Anyway, no biggie. But that was interesting. And another thing I noticed, they removed the silly face expression Shunshui had when Mayuri was saying, no, what's a shame is that you didn't collect any samples or data from that hollow you encountered in the world of the living. I noticed they removed that. But again, this director, we really see he's leaning towards a more serious theme of Bleach. And hey, I love it. Now, I wouldn't have my them, you know, keeping that in the anime. I mean, I thought it was funny when I noticed that in the manga years ago. But here, they removed it. Also, in terms of silliness, we also see they removed the panel where Rangiku was talking about she was going to make a run to get dumplings, you know, bought the piece of paper that Ashin left, letting Rangiku know he was going back to the world of the living, tell the head captain, whatever, she threw out the she threw the piece of paper, where she bought it up, threw it at the wall, and when it bounced off, you know, that's when we seen the bleach in the chapter uh, number on the bottom piece of paper. They removed that as well. Now, of course, we cut to the Ishida mansion where Masaki is talking to Ryukin's mother. Of course, she is confronted by Ryukin's mother regarding her whereabouts, you know, how she was battling white along with, you know, Ishin. And I noticed in the panel where she actually grabbed Masaki's arm, you know, that was removed. And uh, that would have been perfect because clearly to me, this director, he's going for a more serious approach with the bleach and Maybe, I don't know, in the Japanese culture or whatnot, I don't know if that seems too aggressive or that just seems out of place or unnecessary, but I don't think that's the case. I mean, we see how this is uncensored, blood, gore, everything, etc. Especially season two of this final arc of Bleach is going to be hella bloody if you know what's coming up ahead for all the manga readers. So the fact that they removed that, I mean, it's no biggie, but again, something I couldn't help but notice. Again, the visuals, the face expressions, the voices, just everything in the scenes are just, it's, it's just perfect. They just captured these moments 
perfectly. I do like the added touch when Ryukin grabs Misaki after she passed out. He used high in Raku and you know he's going through the air and that extra I mean in the panel they showed him using it but not like how I did in the anime and I'll never forget seeing this moment. Um, I'm like, I, I love this part because it actually all made sense how it came together because I used to wonder how did they all know each other, you know? Machine, Ryukin, um, um, Udahara, and of course we see it in this. So again, to all my anime only watchers, I just wonder, like man, like you're probably feeling and thinking the same thing I felt when I read this years ago in the manga. And of course, I have to talk to Udahara, man. Once he goes to take Masaki to Udahara and try to get her fixed, this guy is just, he's just not a genius, he's like a super genius, and I love the rivalry between Udahara and Miyuri. It seems like Miyuri, he's more so, you know, not, not, not really intimidated, but it seems like he has a problem with the fact that someone will look at Udahara as being smarter, more of a genius, etc. It doesn't seem like Udahara looks at Miyuri like, Man, like, please, I'm not worried about you. I mean, yes, he has a cool, calm, chill, laid-back demeanor about himself. And I think that's what I really like about Udahara because as smart as he is, it doesn't match his look. Mayuri, he has the crazy mad scientist look along with his crazy mad scientist uh, the works that he does. But it does make you wonder. Everything that Mayuri has ever invented, altered, or done, it makes me wonder if Udahara can do that same thing and vice versa or who can do it better but a lot of people will argue when I when I say people Bleach fans a lot of Bleach fans will argue that Udahara is way more smarter matter of fact let me know down below who is more smarter Udahara or Mayuri or who's the better fighter or who's stronger but hey I'll let you all decide now when we cut to Udahara talking to Ryukin and the Sheen regarding how he can save Masaki it still blows my mind how he just gave up his whole Shinigami life, gave it all up. I mean, some will say that's very honorable of him, how he said, you know what, she saved my life. How, how am I, I will laugh at my future self, you know, she saved my life, but man, I'm just gonna let her die, whatever. I don't know, man, me, I looked at it like this, like, you know what? Hey, she had died, you know, so I said she become a hollow with this Zanpato, you know, Pure the sins, you know, if she ever committed any sins, that's a hollow, hey, pure fire, <laughs> she ain't going to soul society if that's her fate, I'm pretty sure that was her fate, hey, she ain't going to soul society, whatever, you know, hey, even though she'd never know who I am, if I ever see her in soul society, whatever, but maybe, but he didn't want to go about it like that, so, he gave up everything, I, I just, I don't know, man, let me know down below, would you have given up your whole Shinigami life, I mean, you're a noble for crying out loud, you're a captain of squad 10 or the Golden 13. You've been, like, you're hella old. God only knows how old he is. And look at all the work and the time and grind and effort he had to put in. He threw it all away for, man, look, I don't know. But you know what? Yes, it was a mixture of the fact that he was in love with her. Some, I remember when this first came out, someone was like, man, that gotta be kind of weird. He's like, let's say he's, let's say for the sake of argument, he's hundreds of years old. Look how young she is. Like he, some people was looking at it like that. Whatever. Let me know down below. But the fact is, it was just a little bit of like, hmm, I like her. She seems interesting. I can't stop thinking about her. I'm glad it wasn't just that. Just lovey dovey. You know, he also had that sense of honor and pride. Like, nah, I can't let her die when she saved my life. I'm gonna return the favor. But you know, yeah. And poor Ryukin, man. He just felt like, damn, I couldn't even save her. The fact that I'm a Quincy, like this wouldn't work because I am a Quincy. The irony, a Shinigami who fought alongside her, he is the one who saved her life. No, he was the one. He was the only one capable of saving her life, and he decided to do it and threw away everything. You, you can tell, you can see it, you can feel it all over Yuki's face, even in the anime and the manga. It just struck some chords. He just left, felt he wasn't fit for that. So. And right then and there, that's when you've seen, of course, how he was just laying down a foundation of how him and Katagiri, they came together, of course, bam, now they have uh, Ubi. But to rewind it back a little bit, yes, they removed the one scene that so many people were looking forward to seeing when Masaki was naked, you know, when she was in the inner world, the Sheen came in, you know, and went to save her, striking down a hollow, and I noticed in the manga, he was a little bit more vocal towards the hollow during that moment, but they removed that for whatever reason, and it, I... I I mean, this director, man, I guess he's just want to take take out 
anything that was sexualized in Bleach. And it makes me wonder, I wonder if he's going to take out the scene when um, Yumichika tells Giselle that, you know, he, she, nowadays you got to be careful with these pronouns, let's just say Giselle, you know, <laughs> when Yumichika told Giselle that that character smells like semen, you know, I wonder if they're going to keep that in there because that is something implied to be sexual. So, and I, and I noticed he, he took out Rukia's butt floating up. Now nah, he removed the whole fact that Masaki is naked. I mean, you could see she was naked in the anime, but that moment, that scene from that side profile, it, that was gone. It was removed. And I know so many people there just pissed off. Just like, damn, I don't understand this. We don't get to see Rukia's cheeks, and now we don't get to see Masaki's millets. I don't get it. Well, whatever. He removed it. It is what it is. Again, you never know, man. They may keep all this in the DVD. Not DVD, but the Blu-ray when it gets released. So as it continues on when the Sheen is telling Ichigo about all this, I noticed what was removed was the panel when it was saying it was, I believe, Ryukin's decision to have Masaki, you know, uh, not be a part of... Basically, that was his way of letting go of her. You know, like, now nah, she's impure now, and she's probably going to um, just be in debt with that Soul Reaper and... She's gonna be thinking about him even more. Like, no, it's just, just go, just go. That was removed, and I guess it, it kind of makes sense. We also got to see more extended footage when Masaki and Ashin, how they were getting closer. Yes, that was in the manga where they went to the movies, but the extended dates and everything. There was a silly comical panel that was in the manga. They removed that as well, but I mean, it's pretty cool how it all played out, you know, into Ichigo's birth. Now, I noticed when the episode ended, I, it really felt real short. I said, ah, oh, now wait a minute, nah, nah, nah. So when those credits hit, I always scroll through the credits to make sure I'm not missing an after credit scene. And as I was scrolling through, I said, wait a minute, it was just that much more left. I'm like, well, it has to be something else. And of course, we see the extended version of Masaki's death. Very well animated. Of course, it's still messed up. I can only imagine Ichigo is probably still scarred and traumatized over that. Some say he's over it, but it's something he'll never forget. And it's crazy how all of this happened not mainly solely because of Aizen, but just so many people were like just pawns and chess pieces in this whole thing. Some, you know, well, I, I would say a lot of it was unplanned, especially when Masaki showed up, Aizen hit him with the, no, no, let her cook, let's see what happens. You got Aizen playing Albert Wesker, doing all these experiments, then you got a Sheen in the mix, and you got Ryukin, Uruhara, Masaki, those, let's, just let's take Aizen out of it. That's one hell of a connection. You know, those four. Ryukin, Uhara, Masaki, and Ashin. Those four. It, it's, it, it's crazy. And then Ichigo and Uryu play a major role into this because we know Ryukin and Katagiri, they get together and have Uryu. And it, it's, man. Now, I did notice with Uryu, his mom, Katagiri, and the Bount art, they actually show a little bit of her face. However, you can take that as not canon, obviously. And... I mean, I think in the manga, they didn't show the actual picture of her and Uryu as a child. It just showed a picture of her. I could be mistaken. I don't know. But, yeah, to me, very good episode. Very good pacing. Nice music. It was inserted perfectly into the moments, giving that extra feel of emotion and how serious it was, how important it is. Because backstories, action or no action, are very important, especially when it comes to the main character. And I, that's what I really liked about this, how there was just so much interaction between so many other characters that explained how Ichigo came to be. It wasn't just a regular old, oh, legendary Shinigami, every so 5,000 years another one pop up. It wasn't nothing like that. It was so much that went into this as to why Ichigo is so strong. And that is one of the reasons why Ichigo, man, he's he just live action, man. I mean, a lot of people don't like him, but whatever, you know. Hey, Ichigo, hey, that's where it's at. Not that the last episode didn't matter, but this episode is where things really matter. Because some would disagree that, yes, you know, this isn't the best episode of Bleach ever, but this episode held one of the greatest moments of all Bleach history in this episode, and I'm, I cannot wait to touch on it. But of course, we got to start to the beginning because there are things to address. So one thing I wondered about, I'm pretty sure Akumi, she's just left very confused. I mean, she can't see Ashin. Ichigo's outside, you know, 
of course, Ichigo, he got snatched up by Mira. She popped up out of nowhere. And, I mean, I, I, maybe she's like, wait a minute, I just seen Ichigo right here. Also, who did he, who was he turning around looking at and talking to? And then here come Mira out of nowhere, snatches him up. But, of course, he goes back to find his Atsuchi in this moment. So much better than the anime. In the manga, it felt like it just went by like that. Just, just real quick. You know, showed up. Turned around, they all bowed down to him, walked over there, shook the hand, that was it. And I'm so glad this director, he really, really knew the significance of these moments to really, really capture the intensity, the seriousness, the moment. More importantly, of course, the accurate emotion. That's what basically what I'm trying to say because this is a very serious, crucial moment, man. This is Ichigo, the main character. This is him going back to the roots, the origins, getting that understanding, no more confusion and bull crap. And I just love how they did that. The motherfuckers bowed down to him. They all bowed. And he knew exactly where to go. And then the manga, when I first read it, I was so hyped. When you see just the white, like the gray peel away, it was the white. And you see the hollow mask right there. It's, I, I, I love it. I mean, I know it's not literally a mask mask, but you get what I'm saying. I love that moment, the quality, the angle, the music, all fitting for this moment. I'm so glad they captured it because when they, you all know how it is, man, for the manga readers, or not, not just of Bleach, just anything. You see something in the manga, it's like, man, this is gonna be real sweet or epic animated, and you really hope they deliver because you just hate that underwhelming, lackluster feeling, man. Like, the part of the episode come up, and then you see it, it's like, mm, ah, they, they didn't capture it. That's one of the worst feelings when you're a big fan of something, and you can only hope they change it in the blue air, but that's not always the case. And yes, that is to a degree they can do that. There's a video I've seen how they change things with Attack on Titan. Like the recent Attack on Titan Blu ray is a side by side comparison and walkthrough of what they changed, you know, what they added and inserted in terms of lighting and colors and certain animations. It's pretty cool. So I really wonder and hope they do that with Bleach. And you gotta give props to Toshiro, man. Starting all over from the beginning, it's on Jutsu to hone his skills, you know. And I love basically what he said. I can't quote him word for word, but you know, you can't sit there worrying about what was lost in the past. You can only move forward, you know, touch on his skills, you know. His bunkai is gone. He's like, huh? Not gonna sit over here and cry over spilled milk. You gotta respect that out of Toshiro. And I also like how I switched to, you know, Hisaki training with Kensei. Kensei called out, you know, Mashiro, you know, she hollified right into the soggy stomach, dropped him. And it's crazy how, you know, Kensei told Hisagi, look, I'm not soft like Tosin. And that's when Hisagi told Kensei, look, I respect you, I look up to you, but I won't allow you to bad mouth Tosin like that. And I can't remember if he said Tosin or Captain Tosin. So what's funny is that this reminds me of the moment when Momo was referring to Aizen still as Captain Aizen. It's like she was delusional. She 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 knew <laughs> this guy. She knew Eisen betrayed everyone. She didn't want to believe it. She wanted to make excuses for it and you know maybe this, maybe that, but it's like with Hisaki, it's like damn. Now Tosin is one of my favorite bleach characters, but did you not see what Tosin was a part of? Did you not see what he did? Like it, it's it's crazy. Now yes, the novels go way deeper into his meaning and origin and backstory as to why he did what he did. Some would say it's justified. Some would say he was just, you know, scarred and messed up in the head over the way things happen and his, you know, uh, hatred towards, you know, Central 46. And it, it's, it's just so many things that's real deep with Tosin. So some would say Tosin is a bad guy, but he's not, but he's a justified bad guy. But his end goal was good, but his path to it was bad, so you can't really count as that. It's kind of tricky with Tosin. Let me know down below. But again, I just find it funny. Like, hey, <laughs> come on, it's like, like you, 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 you can't just erase and just push to the side the bad things Tosin have done because at the end of the day, Tosin did do some bad things. And again, I give him props for standing up to his uh, Kensei like that. You know, Kensei is stronger, faster. He's a captain. He's a superior. And he still spoke to him the way he did like that. I mean, it takes some balls to do that. Now, I notice in the manga, the next panel is switched to Tessa Zymon, noticing how, you know, of course he was training, and noticing how Kumamura was still in that cave for quite some time. Then I believe it switched to Squad 12. And then it switched to Kumamura talking to his grandfather, if I'm not mistaken. Well, his great-grandfather. 
But in the anime, after Hisagi was talking to Kensei, it switched to Squad 12. Then Omeda and his sister, and then it switched to Soy Phone doing push-ups. Then it switched to Kumamura talking to his great-grandfather with, of course, the scene with Tetsuzaimo, with a panel of Tetsuzaimo completely removed. But when it comes to Soy Phone doing those push-ups, that's cool, that's impressive, but to me, a lot of times, it just seems, not off-putting, but like, when it comes to physical training like that, when it comes to a world of bleach, you know, I, that, like, I, I spoke about this before in one of my reviews. This isn't Dragon Ball. Maybe she felt some kind of way after Karenji, you know, twisted her arm back there with just two fingers. She like, nah, man, this ain't it. And, of course, the way how, you know, Soul Society got jacked up. Now, Soul Society put the serotate. Of course, she felt like I have to get stronger, but it would have made more sense if she was doing Jensen, talking with her Zapato a lot more. But then again, Bunkai was stolen, so... Yeah, I guess it makes sense. She's only focusing on you know, the physical, but whatever. At least she was training. You got to give her something about that. Moving on to Kumamura and his great grandfather. I did like the scene. You know, um, I really wish they would have touched more on this man. Now, there's now they may they probably will in the future because they're gonna go back to this moment. Now, when I first seen this in the manga, I was so confused, just as confused as the first time I seen Kumamura without the helmet on after it just broke into pieces when he was fighting Kenpachi during the Soul Society arc. But it just made me like Bleach even more because that made me realize like, damn, the world of Bleach is just so big. Soul Society, along especially the fight between Aizen and Ichigo for the final time. Like, man, there's mountain hills, forest trees. There's not just the Serate. There's not just the Rukon districts. It's just vast. And now we're then we're presented with this big ass talking wolf that's part of this clan. Like, wait a minute, it's so much I would love just to see episodes or just read things about that clan, just by themselves, so many questions. And I gotta give props to Kumamura. He didn't care for what he was fighting for, what he was willing to sacrifice. Hey, he was able to take on his great grandfather, man. And I, I I like that, I really do. Now moving on to Ichigo and the Asuchi, I wonder if the director did this on purpose. When they fell through the tube and the chute, you seen this Asuchi's ass in the air. And I swear, man, it felt like they did that on purpose because they know, they're well aware of what's being left out from the manga. And that moment with Asuchi's ass in the air, that wasn't in the manga. So I guess they were like, wait a minute, hmm. Either they knew people were going to say something and flip about not seeing Rukia's ass cheeks. Or they was like, you know, let's, we, we see the feedback. Why don't we give them something? They, they want an ass in the air from some water? All right, let's give them the ass in the air. And of course, it was the damn opportunity. I was like, what the hell? I, I know they did it on purpose because, yes, they keep in just a little bit of humor, you know, the comedic factor. But it's just one of those things, like, they how they specifically did that, it just feel like it was intentional. I mean, I'm like, what the, what the hell is going on? Now, at this moment in time, I already knew what was coming up next, so I'm thinking to myself, please let them nail this. Please let them get it right. I know, I know they have to nail this right. This is one of the most important moments throughout all of Bleach. And, of course, what felt very, very Japanese when, <laughs> when so, you know, his Zapato spirits, you know, they came down and started helping force each go Zapato. What I thought was funny, of course, kicked them, stumped on them. The finger snap to me, <laughs> to me the finger snap that was the funniest one, man. It was just hella random. Yes, that was in the manga as well. Slight extra scenes and angles during the forging that was cool, but you know it was very silly, comical. Introducing you know all all five of them, that's cool, whatever. But when we switch to Ichigo's in the world, this moment, this whole moment gave me motivating goosebumps. I mean. And it was interesting how even the flashbacks is still at that pink filter. But this piece, this is the most one of the most important things for Ichigo. It's one thing to get an origin story and understanding from his father. Some would say this is just as important. But to get an understanding and closure from Zagetsu, you know, his Quincy side of the powers. God, this, it, it was it was flawless it was flawless and this moment gave me so many mixed emotions i'm just sitting there not blinking anticipating hoping they get it right which they did actually they exceeded my expectations but then i'm like wait a minute don't don't tell me like when the music kicked in now nah, yes i know i'm gonna shock everybody 
I don't really care for that song. However, this version of it and the moment that they placed the song in, it was perfect. It was very, very fitting. So I'm like, okay, got this moment, got the right music. Then part of me was feeling like, oh no, and I see them credits pop up. I'm like, don't tell me. Like, nah, man, don't tell me. So I'm seeing this get ready to go off. But at the same time, I want to see more. But also at the same time, I'm just in disbelief. I don't want to believe it. Like, nah, man, this is actually it. This is actually the end. But the quality on the swords, the quality on that, the lighting. When he was in this in the world, when he was holding the true form, of, well, clearly that wasn't the Zanpato, Zanpato. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. When I first seen it, like, you see the way it looked. I thought it was going to be, it's going to have, like, wings or something similar to box actual sword. Maybe that was, like, a representation of box axle sword maybe that's why i look like that but we see he has two zapatos you know ichigo but the lighting on there just just the, the contrast everything man it was just perfect like it i, I i'm still in disbelief just thinking about it. i watched that moment over and over and over and over sometimes you have to start all over and rebuild yourself get an understanding to become the best version of yourself no more wondering help no no more wondering and guessing and being sad down and out depressed i mean that moment yeah we know this is all fictional and whatnot but this moment a lot of people can probably relate to they really could and when he grabbed the zapatos how the whole ocean just evaporated i love that scene which looks so much better than the anime how he's standing there both zapatos you see zangetsu <laughs> in Zangetsu or box Zangetsu in the real Zangetsu and I love what Ichigo said he said I will no longer ask you to give me your strength I will no longer tell you to stand out of my way I will no longer tell you to fight alongside me no I will do this I will fight myself you know the blade is me I fucking love that right there man just the, the lighting on his sword the shininess the sound effects just the particles going up you, you, you can just see in his face seeing his face to clear understanding no more fear no more doubt it was just the perfect perfect unity between him and both of his inner spirits and this is one of the reasons why ichigo like he's just my favorite character man like this matt actually is one of the many reasons and it makes sense for so long he had a basically you could say a fake or half-assed zanpato all the battles he went through all the reasons why it seemed like he was weak or, oh, he only has Getsu Gatensho. Keep in mind, we all know how it is to get new abilities in Bleach. I made a video about this years ago. You have to do Jensen, go in your inner world, talk with your inner spirit, train with it, force it to submission, whatever. Learn a new ability. How could he do that when he never knew the truth, the ores? He had a fake half ass up on. So how, were, how was he supposed to do that? And whoever taught him Jensen before he had to do it? You know? So it, it all made sense and it came together. And just watching this, it just reawakened the feelings I had when I first read this chapter. Um, and, and and then some, because to see it animated, the music, the quality. I know I keep saying quality and lighting and music, but hey, that, that's what I see. That's what they delivered on. That's what you want, right? I mean, they know what we wanted. And, and they just knocked it out the park, man. And the fact that it went off, it was like bittersweet. I mean, like when it was, it's this epic moment, but they're showing credits at the same time. That tugs on different emotions, man. I'm telling you, like it, it was, it was perfect. It was flawless. I loved every moment of it, man. And I just cannot wait. I just cannot wait until season two or Cur two or whatever you want to call it. And I noticed they took something from last chapter and put it into this episode. It was when Uryu, of course, approaching Bach, we see Uryu joined the Star Knights. Ah. Uh, Man, just wait, just wait for all you anime watchers. Just wait. Let me if you're an anime only watcher, let me know down below. How do you feel about this? Are you blown away? How do you feel about Ichigo having two Zanpatos? Even though all this shouldn't be that much of a surprise because a lot of this was in the intro. So for some of the people that were complaining about spoilers, I'm like, look here, ninja. This major moment was in the intro. Especially at the end, you see Ichigo walk with two Zanpatos. But hey, whatever. Again. I gotta say 10 out of 10 episode of Bleach. This is just fantastic, phenomenal. Past two episodes. The way they did it, I loved it. Both episodes back to back. Felt like an hour long. Um, pacing great. 
lighting, music, delivery, direction. What more can you ask for? Now, ever since they announced that Bleach was gonna be chopped up into four parts instead of us getting it in its entirety, this moment right here was always playing in the back of my head like, damn, the last Bleach review. However, it's not gonna be all sad and mushy because you wanna know why, obviously, yes, there will be a season two or occur two in July and I seen the trailer. Yes, I seen the trailer. Um, shout out to one of my viewers and followers who asked me to react to the trailer. I'm sorry when I seen it, I had to watch it right away. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh so there will not be there will not be a reaction video, obviously. But yes, hyped about what I've seen. I'm hyped about it. And I believe this one, season two will be watched more than season one. Because for the manga readers, man, we know what's coming up. And it's about to deliver. You see the quality looks like it's just as good, if not better, from what we've seen in that trailer. But elites, my viewers, followers, fans, subs, my elites, I want to thank all of you for watching these Bleach reviews. It has been an honor, as usual and always, to be able to do these reviews for you. As a real Bleach fan, to other Bleach fans, to all my newcomers, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. No, this is not the end of my channel. No, there's not to be there's not gonna be any long break or whatnot. Still gonna push out content. I still have videos in the editing chopping blocks. Some ah slipped by me. Sometimes it's been crazy hectic weeks. One other video I've been procrastinating on, shame on me, but trust me, it will be all out. And uh Happy New Year if you're watching this. Yes, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, it's probably 2022 or 2023. More than likely, it's going to be 2023 if you're watching this. So, Happy New Year. Hopefully, you went into the new year as a better person. You reflected on the past year. You know, what I do, if you're all curious, I don't smoke or drink. Going out to the clubs and bars, that's not me. If you do it cool, be smart and responsible with it. But I don't do that. The last 30 minutes of the new year, I meditate. I reflect back on the year, everything that I've been through, the good and the bad. What I've learned, what can I improve on to make myself even better to become the best version of myself. And things like that, it keeps me clear-minded and focused going into the next year. And I always ask, you know, I wonder what's going to happen this year. Because I promise you, the things that happened to me this past year, I didn't think. Even the good things. Good things. I, I You know, so... You just never know who's going to walk into your life, what's going to walk into your life, who's going to leave, what's going to leave, what opportunities are going to present themselves. So I'm very grateful and thank you to have you all supporting me, watching me. Um, I do have more things in the works in terms of, you know, me getting out there, more things that I'm going to do, things that you're going to see. I will keep you all updated. Uh, if you're on social media, yes. Links in the description below, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, I just made a TikTok. Yeah, I, I know. My, my younger cousin like, man, make a TikTok, make a TikTok. I, I, just, I only have one video on there. But yeah, so man, I mean, I could go on and on and on. But if you stuck through the whole video, thank you. That's also important. Uh, stay subbed, stay positive, stay healthy, stay smart, stay cool, calm, and collected. All right? I want to thank you all so much. For being back on this journey for me reviewing bleach with that being said it is me captain visor days and i'm saying goodbye i'm saying sign out and i will see you next summer